Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I'm happy to be joined in our studio today with Sarah Kramer from Semisores. We have so <laughs> many semisores all around us, it's, it, it's crazy. <laughs> I brought a whole herd of them. You did, you did, uh, and we thank you for it. Um, these are fun, fun little half dinosaurs making full dinosaurs, uh, and we're excited to talk to you about your semisaur project. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing well today. I'm very excited to be here. Thank Great. you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Um, so, Semisource, why don't you tell us um, how the idea for creating these, tell us first what a Semisore is, and then so, how the idea came about. Absolutely. A Semisore, or Semisore, either way, <laughs> is an attractive dinosaur figurine with a split personality if you will. Um, I was at home one day and I had a little dinosaur figurine. I have no idea where it came from. And I was looking at it and I thought, oh my gosh, wouldn't that be an adorable little taxidermy head dinosaur? And at that point I had started volunteering at Artisans Asylum in Somerville. And I thought, wow, someone could laser cut me little plaques, little wood plaques and then I could mount little dinosaur heads and, and engrave it so it said like George or whatever. <laughs> but then I, I wanted to use all parts of the dinosaur. You know, I thought that would be a sad waste of the tails. Yeah. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that the magnets that I used were fully embedded so that they weren't and aren't choking hazards. Very important or, consideration. Exactly, if they're swallowed, they can be um, a, a, a grave threat. So. Mm. I, I make them very carefully to minimize that threat. Yeah. Wow. And then so, so the idea for putting these dinosaurs, well, taking them apart and then putting them together, like where did, how did that come to you? Um, you know, it's, it's a great question. I unfortunately don't have the <laughs> clearest memories of that time uh, because of um, some cognitive impairment from medical research volunteering that I did. And, and so one reason I was at Artisans Asylum in the first place was to get out of the house, which I hadn't done a lot except for medical appointments. Mm. And the community just embraced me and encouraged me. This was not an idea that I had before. Uh -huh. I taught LSAT prep for about 12 years. Mm. And so it was like, what do I do with my life? And I, I didn't expect the answer to be plastic dinosaurs. And that's not all I do with my life. Right. But um, my husband came up with the name Semisaurs, and I got a lot of help um, carving them, cutting them in half. I learned quickly that I want to use um, a very sharp utility blade, and then I used to core them out by hand. So I cut them in half, and then I cut a flap off mm -hmm. so that there is a, a surface that I can then glue back on to make it look seamless. <laughs> but then I used to core them out by hand, and I'm... Um, embarrassed to admit that I had to be taken to the hospital from the asylum twice, oh entirely no. my fault. Wasn't using asylum tools, was using my own tools. And a um, total of 16 stitches later, someone at the asylum suggested using a drill press. And so that's what I do now. I have my own really amazing drill press. And I get to use that in the jewelry studio. They have been, because they don't really fit into any of the shops directly artisans. Right. We have different shops for woodworking and metalworking, electronics and robotics, um, and jewelry seemed like a good place to make little dinosaurs. So, um, so it makes sense that yeah. you would be more involved with the jewelry shop for working with these uh, plastic shapes that are all different shapes each mm -hmm. time and that you want to get like a very consistent Right. to fit your magnet into. And the influence has been fantastic because now I make semi-sore earrings that are dangly or clippy or I've learned a lot about um, just earring hardware. <laughs> and I realized that the semi sores themselves work as earrings. And it went through a lot of iterating on the magnets, especially finding the right strength of neodymium magnets. Yeah. So I'm big on N52s. And what that means is that they're, they're so strong that, and these were two goals of mine, they will hold as earrings. Not, not for very long. I wouldn't 
go out for a night on the town. Yeah. That's what the actual earrings are for. Right. But then they will also stick through the walls of a pint glass. Yeah, those have been sticking very, very well, I've, I've noticed. Thanks. <laughs> and if, if you do drop one, like I've got these through the table here, if you drop the top, the bottom falls down. <laughs> but when you're using a glass, if you drop it, then you just get to like go fishing and play a fun, fun game. Oh, and this, I can tell you what this stuff is. Do you know what this stuff is? I do not know. It's random. These are dino guts. Oh, all right. So those are the plastic bits that come out when you drill. Exactly. And it's it's just fluffy and, and adorable, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Mm. But I'll find something fun. Yeah. And just finding new uses for these has been such a delightful process. This year, I am trying to branch out into something seasonal, and so thought about uh, Santa sores because I found a Lego Santa hat. And so glued it to this little fellow who is not coming <laughs> off here. This little fellow. And then... Oh, and it, it fits just right. It fits just... Well, I really want them smaller for the other dinosaurs. This happens to be a Triceratops or a Styratosaurus. I forget which. Actually, I think this is a Styratosaurus. I apologize. Um, and so one of my colleagues at the asylum, uh, Tim Butterworth, is 3D printing me teeny little Santa hats that I will then be able to paint and create Santa sores. And he is also 3D printing me these ornaments oh, wow. that are going to allow me to have a Santa sore uh, just magnet itself through the center of the ornament. And with 3D printing at the asylum, the ornament actually says semisores.com 2019. Very nice. And then you have a Santa sore for Very your nice. your holiday delight. Sweet. Very festive. Thank you. So let's talk a little more about artisans mm -hmm. and um, the kind of space that it has allowed for you. We were talking before about how you, as a member, you rent studio space there. I do. And it sounds like the uh, collaboration that has been possible because of the kind of open space uh, that the different members can talk to one another, see what they're doing, see that one is injured and maybe offer a secondary <laughs> way to make Take something. Take to a hospital. <laughs> um, um, yes. Yeah, so so uh, how important has artisans been to your uh, semi-sore making? I definitely wouldn't be here without them, I'll <laughs> say that. Um, the idea came to me, but I wouldn't have been able to make them at home. I wouldn't have known where to source magnets, certainly. Um, and especially, you know, finding the right magnets, finding the right tools. This multi-cut lopper that has removable, interchangeable utility blades has been crucial it's to safety. It's a very serious safety. piece of equipment there. Yes, so <laughs> I keep it locked. Um, played around with super glues a lot, got a lot of advice on brands that might dry perfectly clear, mm. learned how to unstick my fingers, so good advice there. And then um, just things like packaging. I, I wanted to kind of personalize some packaging for this holiday season, so Tom Vancor is uh, being kind enough to help me print, I'm sorry, not print, uh, laser cut. These are actually cut by lasers out of rubber stamps. So you have a nice little stamp to yep, further exactly. your branding. And then someone taught me about um, embossing powder, and so it makes it look nice and shiny, and, and they get to wood cut the stamp blocks for me. So it's, it's been such a team effort. Everyone has been so happy to collaborate and so generous with their time. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's Very nice. a yeah, wonderful you, place to be. You've, you've branched out here. I feel like I'm in your store. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is quite the pop-up. I've been very fortunate to do Fluff Fest two years in a row now. And most recently, I was at the Boston Children's Museum for their Created By Festival 2019. Mm. And when I do community-based events like that, I, I like to represent Artisans Asylum. Um, so wearing the t-shirt and just explaining to people who we are and what we do. Mm. 40,000 square feet of wonder in, in Somerville. And then I lead activities like making little magnets that feature the branded event logo. Um, things like that for Fluff Fest and Created By. And this would be great for, for just about any application. And learned, someone suggested um, that it was a good branding opportunity. So 
So they there you are. semi sore <laughs> stickers on the back. But I also have an Etsy store, and people have been great giving me advice about that, because selling online is its own rabbit hole of decisions. Yeah. And so uh, do you focus primarily on selling online, or do you go out to craft fairs and, and other venues like that? Mostly craft fairs. I've been uh, really pushing myself to get out there online and get listings up. Mm -hmm. I also make washi eggs, which are eggshells covered in washi paper. And so that is, is that, that is, here? yes, washi is Japanese paper made of mulberry fiber. And I just love it. And, and so that's a completely separate endeavor. But I've found that I would love to find a way to, to make the dinosaur eggs kind of crossover work. So yeah. we'll see about that. Yeah. But um, that, is, that is something that I also sell online and have been fortunate enough to sell at Tokai which is a Japanese gift shop in Porter Square. So okay, they yeah. sold my eggs on consignment for Easter and they're going to for Christmas as well. I'm oh, very, very nice. excited. Very nice. Um, and you were talking before about collecting them all. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about collecting them all is you can, I don't know the exact math, but you can create kind of infinite combinations by mixing and matching. Oh Am my I right? gosh, yes. So there are 23 kinds of semi-sores and that actually, I should clarify, a five-year-old was very good to correct me. Um, that includes the uh, kind of Loch Ness Monster um, plesiosaur, which is not a dinosaur. It's a, a, a marine reptile. Oh, OK. Yes, important distinction. Especially kids are, kids are the best. So <laughs> semisaurs, the other thing about them is, yes, they break in half. You can use them to hold a business card or identify your drink at a party. Um, with the wall of a glass, but you can also mix and match the heads and tails. And so, let's see, 23 times 22 times, yeah, I think it's 23 exclamation point would be the number okay. of I possible combinations. I forgot my ninth grade math. So. Permutations <laughs> and combinations, yeah. But um, then I also, so I, I, I really like the fact that I found these little um, skeletal, dinosaurs mm. in the same form factor. So now I have skelosaurs, which mix and match as well with the semisaurs, and those are fun. I especially like when they are, I think of the heraldry, if you think of like Game of Thrones, yeah. or so the, they had names for all the poses of the animals. So okay. this would be a skeletriceratops rampant. All right. Just so much fun. <laughs> and they, they work with the toys you already have. They can drive little yeah. fire trucks. It's kind of like um, when the meteor struck and wiped out the dinosaurs. It's oh, kind of no. like what they were at one point, like for a second, maybe. Maybe just a <laughs> maybe second. Maybe that's a little too morbid. <laughs> but, uh, hey, it happened. Yeah. And I, I do like to think of these as being made from recycled dinosaurs. If you subscribe to the biogenic theory of petroleum origin, then plastic might be kind of sort of recycled dinosaurs. Not Mesozoic era, a lot earlier, but. All right, I, I will take that for granted. <laughs> I will, Thank yes, you. Not, not my uh, expertise, not my field of expertise at all. But um, I do really love how you've made, how you've transformed our, our little studio desk here into uh, this wonderful, colorful, uh, vibrant uh, place populated with all sorts of half and full dinosaurs. <laughs> well, I'm lucky and delighted to be here. Thank you yeah. so much. Um, so is there, are there uh, any events that you will be in the sure. near future that you want to maybe let viewers know about? So on, I think, the 6th, I will be at the Argenziano School here in Somerville. Okay. They're having a craft fair, and it's always a wonderful time. And then on the 14th and 15th, or 15th and 16th, Saturday and Sunday. OK, whatever I weekend will, that falls on. <laughs> exactly. I will be at Artisans Asylum for our winter market. Yes, that's which always is fun. Absolutely. And honestly, last year I was blown away. Um, I had done Fluff Fest, but the winter market was really where I thought, OK, this is, this is a thing. People love these. And I sold out on Saturday, was up all night Sunday making more, and then sold out again Sunday. That's so great. It was amazing. So I'll be doing that again. I'll have branded packaging thanks to all of the collaboration at Artisans Asylum. And just just delighted to, to be doing this and to have the opportunities. 
All right. Well, Sarah Kramer, thank you very much for, for coming and talking with us. Um, if you are interested, uh, seek out the Argenziano Holiday Market and uh, then the Artisans Asylum Holiday Market. And, and my Etsy shop. Oh, there you is, are. Yeah, what's your Etsy shop? <laughs> it is www.etsy.com slash shop slash refractory outlet. Okay. And do you have a website? Uh, semisaurus.com. So <laughs> semisaurus.com. And I'm on Instagram, hashtag semisauradventures, definitely. But um, in my Instagram handle is semisaurus. Very fun. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. My pleasure.